understand.
Good morning. Welcome to worship at Leap of Faith Church. I'm so glad that you can be here with me this morning to, to worship, to participate more fully. I encourage you to use that giving call or that uh, comment column that's that's right over here. The giving button at the top if you'd like to make an offering, support ministry here at Leap of Faith. And in the middle of the column, if you would just check in, leave your name and the names of those worshiping with you. And all the way down at the bottom, there's a form that you can fill out to leave your email address if you're not receiving our weekly newsletter. I would be very happy to send that to you. And you would be very happy to um, to have left your email address and to begin re receiving our newsletter as well because on Monday, tomorrow, there'll be a special edition of our newsletter that gives a complete Holy Week schedule. And I don't think that you'll want to miss that. So if you're already a subscriber to the newsletter, be sure to check your email box tomorrow evening. And if you're not a subscriber to the email uh, emailed newsletter, Go all the way down to the bottom of the column and leave your email address there so we can start sending it to you. So you won't miss out on, on uh, all that's happening between Palm Sunday through Holy Week leading up to Easter Sunday. And gosh, it's not part of Easter, but you know the Sunday after Easter? Do you know what happens that Sunday? That's the sixth birthday of Leap of Faith Church. And I'm sure you want to be here for that to find out more about that. Today we're building, a, constructing a labyrinth on our parking lot, a prayer labyrinth. It, it, it will be uh, begin to be put in place at 10.15 this morning. That's 10.15 Central Daylight Time. If you're in the neighborhood this afternoon or this evening, the labyrinth will stay out there until the rain washes it away. And you're welcome to walk that labyrinth and pray um, anytime as long as it's still out there. If you'd like to updated information about the church, mylofc.org, and of course our Leap of Faith Church Facebook page. Again, if you haven't checked in yet, please use the comment column to do that, and please know how very, very welcome you are this Sunday morning. Our call to worship today, during this Lenten season, you'll remember maybe that we're remembering just who it is who holds the future. We are worshiping the one who holds the future, our future, and the future of the whole world. This morning, the fifth Sunday of Lent, we're remembering the inspiration of Psalm 30, verses 6 and 7. Whether our lives are going great or whether every seems, everything seems to be falling apart, whether God seems near or very far away, the truth is that God always loves us. God never leaves us. The truth is that God is right here with us right now, today, in these very moments. I invite you to continue to worship now with the music of the Leap of Faith Band. Thank you. 
Lord, I would clasp thy hand in mine, nor ever murmur, nor repine. Content whatever loss I see, still tis thy On earth is done when by thy grace the victory's won. Even death's cold wave I'll not flee, since God through Jordan leadeth me. He Leap of Faith, of course, is an independent church, not connected with any local church, with any other local church or any, any denomination. In the earliest days of the church, we adopted as our own statement of faith the historic confession of the Christian faith, the Apostles' Creed. I invite you now to join me in that, in that creed. The words appear on our screen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, if you would take just a minute to think about and name to yourself and name before God those things that have caused rough, rough places in your relationship with God, uh, name those things. Confess them in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I invite you to pray with me. God, when we see only what seems impossible, forgive us. Remind us that you are the God of unlimited possibility. God, when we give up hope, forgive us. Remind us that every single minute of every single day, you give us reason to hope. God, when we get stuck in the past, forgetting that you hold the future, forgive us and help us look ahead. We are praying this prayer in Jesus' name, the one who showed us that love overcomes everything. Hear us, God, as we pray together and as we pray silently on our own, confessing it all to you. Be sure that when we've confessed in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you're forgiven. And so am I. Amen. Now, order of worship is a little bit different today. Today we are... We are continuing with our with our sermon, uh, 
and we'll kind of see how the rest unfolds. As you might know, I've talked about it quite a bit, I'm very, very excited about the Easter egg hunt coming up on Saturday, April 16th at our farm. We started having these Easter egg hunts about 15 years ago when our granddaughters were just toddlers. And over the years, the Easter egg hunt has become an important, much anticipated part of our Easter holiday celebration. We've missed these Easter egg hunts so much in the past two years when it didn't seem wise to get a whole large group of people together to even to hunt and hunt eggs outside. Uh, we love the Easter egg hunt. We love it because we love seeing the farm fill up with people, family members, and neighbors and longtime friends from other places we've lived, and of course, of course you, our church family. I don't have much quarrel with combining the secular with the religious like this. Still in all, though, if you happen to be at our Easter egg hunt on Saturday, April 16th, and someone happens to pull you aside and happens to say to you, can you explain this whole Easter thing to me? What would you tell that person? What would you say? If that person wanted a short seminary answer, I'd say that Easter is about the principle embodied by Jesus, that self-sacrificing love, love that seems to be leading only to death, to physical death, to death of our dreams, the death of our hopes. I'd say that Easter is about the principle embodied by Jesus, that self-sacrificing love, it always results in new life. Now, there are a lot of subtopics that can and should be attached to that statement, but for me, that's the main thing. Self-sacrificing love, it always results in new life. I was saying this to Summer a few days ago, and she said, stop, stop, that's too many words, that's too many words. So you might explain it differently. You might explain Easter differently in an elevator talk situation. You might do well to explain Easter differently than I'd explain it. But while the short answer, yours or mine, might be enough to answer a quick question about the reason for Easter, the story that we have today tells us so much more. Here's how that story told in the Gospel according to John. It, it starts in the 11th chapter and continues through the 12th chapter. Here's how, here's how the story we have today goes. Here's how this story explains Easter. So it starts like this. It seems that Jesus has been say saying and doing things that have put him at odds with the religious mainstream in his part of the world. But Jesus, he's been making friends as well. Three of those friends are Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, two sisters and their brother. While Jesus is out of town, the brother Lazarus falls ill. And while Jesus is out of town, Lazarus dies. Now Jesus gets word of this and he heads toward Bethany, the village where this little family lives, but Jesus doesn't arrive there until, until Lazarus has been dead and buried for four days. The sisters Mary and Martha, they are understandably grief-stricken and they blame Jesus for not coming sooner when he certainly could have been something to help, something to heal their brother Lazarus. Lazarus, Jesus too, he too is grief stricken, but when he gets to Lazarus's grave, he tells them to open it up. And then Jesus prays. And then Lazarus, who is deader than dead, Jesus prays and then Lazarus, dead man Lazarus, walks out of that grave as alive as he has ever been. Mary and Martha, his sisters, they are doubtless ecstatic, and some of their friends at the graveside with them, they see what Jesus has done, bringing this dead man back to life, and they begin to believe that Jesus is indeed the Son of God. But some of the people at Lazarus' grave, they go to the religious authorities, they tell what Jesus has done, raising this dead man up to life. And the authorities, they can see that they have a problem. They can see that they have a big problem if Jesus becomes powerful. They see that if they let this kind of thing go on, the Roman government will come in and the Roman government will take over from them. The Roman government, they don't like the idea that someone might have more power than they do. And so the religious authorities they are afraid. They decide that the quickest thing, the easiest thing to do about Jesus 
is just to kill him. And so Jesus lays low for a while in a little out of the way desert town to avoid arrest. Everybody starts to wonder whether he's going to leave that little desert town to go to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. Sure enough, six days before the Passover, Jesus does leave that dusty little town and he does head out for Jerusalem. But first, but first he goes back to Mary and Martha and Lazarus's house where he's been invited to a dinner held in his honor. Here's how Eugene Peterson, in his paraphrase of the Bible, the message, tells this part of the story in the Gospel according to John, chapter 12, verses 2 through 11. Lazarus and his sisters invited Jesus to dinner at their home. Martha served. Lazarus was one of those sitting at the table with them. Mary came in with a jar of very expensive aromatic oils, anointed and massaged Jesus' feet, and then wiped his feet with her hair. The fragrance of the oils filled the house. Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, even then getting ready to betray Jesus, said, why wasn't this oil sold and the money given to the poor? It would have easily brought 300 silver pieces. Judas said this not because he cared two cents for the poor, but because he was a thief. He was in charge of their common funds, the funds that Jesus and the disciples were, were supporting themselves with. Judas was in charge of their common funds, but he also embezzled from those funds. Jesus said to Judas, you leave Mary alone. She's anticipating and honoring the day of my burial. You will always have poor people with you. You won't always have me. Word got out among the Jews that Jesus was back in town. The people came to take a look not only at Jesus, but also at Lazarus, who had been raised from the dead. So the high priests, they plotted to kill Lazarus because so many of the Jews were going over and believing in Jesus on account of him. So this story, part of the run-up to the crucifixion, it tells part of what Easter is about. It's about celebration, and it's about rejoicing. It's about service, and it's about sacrifice. It's about selfishness, and it's about betrayal. It's about loss, and it's about life. It's about death, and it's about life overcoming death. This story, it's about the one we are trusting to hold our future, even when the future looks dicey indeed. And that's what this story tells. It tells what happened at a dinner party on the last Saturday night before Jesus was killed. It tells that sitting with Jesus at the dinner table on that last Saturday was a man Jesus raised sure enough from the grave. And that man, that person, he is me. That man, that person, he is you. And that's part of what Easter is about, Jesus raising you and me from the grave. It's about Jesus raising us, you and me, to life, no matter how firmly death seems to have its grip on us. Next Sunday, of course, is Palm Sunday. Next Sunday, we have the story of Jesus' last week before the cross. These stories flesh out what Easter is about, and it is good to have them in mind. It's good to keep them in our heart, just in case anyone asks just in case anyone asks you what Easter is all about. Amen. We have some joys and concerns, of course, today. I ask you to pray today, as I do every Sunday, for those who lead our world, those who lead our country, our state, our communities, our churches. I ask your continuing prayers for the people of Ukraine and the people of Russia and the people of the surrounding countries, countries all around the world who are receiving refugees from Ukraine. I ask your prayers for all those who have health-related concerns, Francesca, Norma, Jeff, Tanya, John, Rosemary, Kaner, Fidel, the Van Hoosier family, Bobby, Steve, Billy, Laura, Carol, Heidi, Jewel, Pat, Dassey, 
Mike, Ronnie, and Laurie. Please pray for those who serve our country in the military, especially Tyler, Jessica, Jordan, Devin, and Clayton. And continue to pray, please, for those who are still recovering from and dealing with the Texas fires and tornadoes. We have a birthday to celebrate this week. Tomorrow, April 4th, Jewel Lease has a birthday. Other joys as well. We had 19 online worshipers on Sunday, March 27th. We have Kyle Powell joining our staff tomorrow as associate pastor. I thank God for those who have already participated in 700 miles to Mexico. Thanking God for those who have participated in the community art on the chancel. Those who are traveling, please pray for the all those who are taking advantage of the safer situation to be out on the road and up in the air and enjoying travel across our nation and, and around our world. And I ask your ongoing prayers for our Leap of Faith Band and for Brad Nixon and Summer Holbrook who produced this worship service. Our prayer today was inspired by a prayer that comes out of the Lutheran Church of Australia. I found it posted online and I thought that I would pray that prayer for Leap of Faith Church today. So now let's pray. God, your son accepted the service of Martha, the friendship of Lazarus, the devotion of Mary. Bless your people everywhere, God, who serve you in all kinds of ways in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Those who serve in the church, clergy and laity alike, those who serve in the home as parents and caregivers and homemakers, those who serve in the workplace as employers and employees. Bless, bless God the students and school children who serve by learning for the future and the teachers who make that learning possible. God bless those who volunteer their services in the community and whatever community they live. Bless those who serve in political office, those who serve in the military, those who offer friendship, those who pray fast or give generously of their time or of their money. God, God bless those who befriend the lonely and bless those whose work is dangerous, full of peril. Bless the service of all your people, God, and assure them that you are well pleased with their work. Show your kindness to those who serve in the name of Jesus Christ. Show your kindness to those who serve without knowing you yet. Show your kindness to those who serve without knowing that they're serving you. Reward them with your grace. Open their eyes to see you and give them the gift of faith. Speak to the consciences of those who serve evil. Show them that truth is better than lie and that peace is better than violence. Keep us all from the greed and false compassion of Judas. We ask you, God, to hear this prayer along with all the prayers of this church, those that we've shared out loud, those we've kept to ourselves. And know, God, that we are praying in the name of Jesus, the one who teaches us to pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for coming to worship today. If you joined us late and haven't left your name in that comment column, would you do that now? If you'd like to support, uh, support ministry with a financial gift, all the way to the top of the column. And if you'd like to receive our newsletter and aren't receiving it yet, all the way to the bottom of the column and leave your email address. Again, tomorrow night, be sure to check your, your email box because there'll be a special edition of our newsletter that tells all of the uh, Holy Week all the Holy Holy Week events, activities, worship services, and so on, leading up to Easter. And of course, mark your calendar for the sixth birthday of Leap of Faith Church, the Sunday after Easter. All right. In closing, we go into the world to live with generosity, giving with the goal that the love of our Lord Jesus Christ be made be made known through our own open hands 
and through our own open hearts. Go in peace, my friend. Go in peace. upon his promise just to know the says the lord jesus jesus how i trust him how i've proved him more and o'er jesus jesus precious jesus oh for grace to trust him more Precious Jesus, Savior, friend, and I know that you are with me, will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, Oh, for grace to trust Him more. Oh, for grace to trust Him more. Oh, for grace to trust.